All right, what's good, everybody? This is Christina. Hey, okay, I'm Miss Chrissy though with Street Church Music, and today I have Charlie with me. Um, just go ahead and introduce yourself to the people. Let the people know. Uh, what's up, y'all? Man, this is Charlie Gist. I'm a 23 year old uh, positive hip hop Christian uh, artist from Central Florida, and um, you know I've been doing it for a good minute. Um, about two and a half, three years seriously. You know, I got some new things on the way, you know, finally it's just starting to put things together and feel like, feel like the spirit is moving for real, man. Yes. Yes. So, um, I've been following your journey for a while. I remember when, back when you were, um, contemplating, should you do a full time or not? Right. That was about mm -hmm. maybe a year, maybe two years ago. So. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So how, like, how has it been like fully trusting God with your mm. process and your creativity? Yeah. So I was working as an assistant PE coach, uh, working with kids at an elementary school and I, I, I loved it. I loved it a lot, but you know, after a while I was just like, something just in me just stirred in me. And I was like, you know what, what is this feeling? So I was like, I kind of sought that out a little bit more. And I was like, man, what is this feeling? And so like the more and more like I was at work, I was like getting kind of get not in trouble, but I would be in trouble because I'd be rapping on my phone, like <laughs> waiting in the classroom to go out and just so I was like, you know what, let me just take a chance. And so what I did is I uh, I left, um, you know, I put in a, a, a two weeks notice and, um, you know, I, I did a performance for the school and everything like that. I made a song for the um, called Success is a Mindset and I made it for the kids to motivate them you know, for the FSA test and things like that. And uh, once I left, um, I was like, man, what am I going to do? So I uh, decided I wanted to do the the gig thing and like uh, do DoorDash, Instacart, you know, try to pay my bills that way. And then um, a little bit after that, you know, I was like, you know, this is getting really, really tough. So I went ahead and I applied for unemployment, to be real. And um, I got accepted. And that's been helping a lot, you know, still living at home, um, you know, get in that and just, you know, right now I'm just currently in that, still in that, uh, that state, just, you know, seeking for, um, opportunities within music. And, um, you know, a lot of people may be like, man, what are you doing, bro? You're living off the government. I was like, well, this is really helping me right now as a college student. And, you know, it, it, it's really been a blessing. So I'm just, you know, doing shows now, um, in Orlando, I had, one the other day and one now it's coming up on the 21st of uh of february so so orlando mm -hmm. like from what i could see we're in ohio up here okay but from what i understand the chh has like a situation in florida mm. um, that's what i'm i mean it seemed like okay they have like more they have like a i think they have like a gospel hip-hop radio station down there okay mm -hmm. um so how has it been like navigating right so I did a few church events. Uh, and for me, honestly, it just wasn't my lane. I feel like I'm more able to uh, be myself in places like bars, you know, uh, be, <laughs> and like be myself because uh, those kind of people will not judge you as much. You know, they're already at the bottom. I'm similar to that. Even though I don't do what they do, I'm, I'm that humble person. I feel like I could be, you know, like down and depressed with them. That's what Jesus was about. And so I, you know, some people get mad, but like I, I've kind of, you know, I mentioned, you know, Christian hip hop, um, but in my personal belief, it's really from what, what's coming from within. And I think um, uh, a lot of people have good intentions, um, but for me, it's, it's never been about calling myself that name. It's right. always been about, you know, I'm a rapper, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm a hip hop artist. But when I get my opportunity, people will see my heart and they'll see what I'm trying to do with the music. You know, it, it's all about pushing God to people, pushing the Lord to people at the end of the day. Even though I may not be saying John 316 or I may not be saying uh, this here, this, that and everything. When it comes, it's, it's about the spirit behind it, you know, and I think that's what a lot of people have missed is the spirit behind music, the spirit, behind, you know, really connecting with God um, versus to just you know, being really perfect with what you say, so. Right, and so, like, something that you said really resonated with me when you said, mm. you know, even though you might be in the bar, like, mm -hmm. you, they already down, you know what exactly. I'm saying? Exactly, A lot of times exactly. people go to those places because 
they are nursing pain and wounds mm-hmm. that need to be healed. Absolutely. So I think personally it's really dope for you to be in those spaces because that's really love what free church music is about. Yeah. We're not really about the church per se, right. but we're more so about taking the church to the streets. And that's exactly yeah. where I'm at right now. You know, I'm not currently you know, planted in the church. Um, I was a leader and I was, I did a lot of things in youth group, but after, as I gotten older, I just wasn't able to resonate, wasn't able to connect. And um, for me, I do have some dope friends that I, I can connect with and still, you know, I still call myself a Christian, even though I was hurt time after time by people in the Christian hip hop uh, lane and just, you know, just a lot of different things, man, that I could have easily went a, a different direction, but I knew that God, you know, consistently wanted me to, uh, you know, keep the faith. That that was the thing. You know, and we think about the, the verse in the Bible where you know, um, where they go and they travel to a different land. I'm not sure what it is, but they travel to a different land and it's unknown, and they don't know what they're getting themselves into, but they know they need to go anyways. That's kind of the lane I feel like I, I I'm in right now. So. Yeah. And so, like, what are some of, as an independent artist, it can uh-huh. get very expensive real quick. Yeah. Like, by the time you buy a beat or by the time you try to pay a videographer or right. whatever. Like, it can get expensive right. real quick. Absolutely. So, what have you learned over the course of doing music <sighs> full time as right. far as, like, the importance uh-huh. of having different skills? So, a lot of people will tell you, you know, you need this and you need that. Well, I had a, a AKG P220 condenser mic. And uh, it's kind of funny. Um, I, t- I took that with me in the car to help my friend, uh, Midnight B, shout out to him, uh, to, to work on a whole six songs. So I broke it down, all that stuff, just to bring it in. And we ended up just throwing all those all that time away. He ended up re-recording. And it was like God spoke. And this was just like two days ago. He, God kind of like spoke me through. I was like, what if that was for a purpose? Like, what if I didn't need that AKG P2 $2,200 mic that even some people have told me that it was trash anyway. So I just went ahead just recently and just went back to my, uh, my blue snowball that I'm I'm talking on right now. And I've, I made a song and it drops on, um, the first, um, that that's, uh, premiering and I already dropped the the lyric video, but I'm like, wow, this came out amazing on this $50 mic. And I just did another song just last night and I got it mixed and I paid this guy online for 50 bucks for 50 bucks to get it mixed. And it's been, it's been amazing. I'm like, God kind of showed me, he's like, you don't, you don't need to spend so much money. You know, you can use what you have and I'm going to use it. And that spoke to me so hard because I was like stressed, bro. I was like, Oh, I need to get this. And I was like, Nope, I just got two counters right here. I got my, my computer here and I got a blue mic that was 50 bucks. Now plug it straight in my Mac. Right. It's all I, you know, and that's what God was telling me. He's like, you could be content. You know, yeah, you can be content yeah. with, and when you're content with what you have, those things become even more valuable to your craft. And like, that's what I've learned so far. Yeah. I think that, you know, um, I don't know. Cause I come from a different era Gotcha. around mm-hmm. when master P was out around okay. the time when it was okay for your stuff to sound a little bit Rugged yeah because, for sure you know what i'm saying i feel like i hear stuff on the radio that's still rugged i'll be like that's not right but right. i mean yeah a lot of people don't really pay attention you know but i mean as an artist you like the you know the greatest yeah. sound quality but, yeah, yeah but i think mm-hmm. that every artist goes through their process i think that we go mm-hmm. through our learning stages where it's like okay well let me just cons- um consistently record 12 songs in yeah. the project and, and I think it makes growth when you can look back like, oh, I remember when my project used to sound like that, but yeah. now I'm here and now I'm growing. You know what I'm saying? For sure. For sure. Absolutely. So, and then what you said about being content, I think that the comparison is the thief of joy. Yeah. A lot of times, like even with me, with, with the different things that I'm into, I have mm-hmm. to almost like put blinders on to exactly. focus on what God has for me because like Absolutely. even getting in the car yesterday, the Holy Spirit was like, just be content. Like you don't That's have it, to live man. this big life and try to fill mm-hmm. big shoes. Just be yourself and be true to who you are. Cause I think when we try to run somebody else's race, like yeah. it's frosting and it's frustrating and it and it robs our joy. Absolutely. Right? Yes, absolutely. For sure. So what project are you are you like releasing singles every month? Or yeah, so I'm I don't really have a schedule. It's just kind of when I, I get it done, but like 
just like the other day, you know, I, I usually record and I send it off. He usually sends it a day after. So I, the song, the audio is already out. It's called Save Me. Um, ASAP Preach actually used that same hook before, but it's because it's a, uh, it's a sample. So a lot of people have used a different hook. It's on a different beat though. And so uh, that video comes out on Monday and I just got done. I just got my mix today um for a new for a new single coming out um it's titled um let me look real quick i don't forgot because <laughs> you i mean one thing about you that i can say is that you are mad consistent okay right like every time i look up I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm like this dude is serious okay? i hey man i i like you know i i get tired of looking at other people and they're consistent and i'm like why like you know, I used to do reactions a lot. And I'm like, you know, I'm getting tired of reactions. It's only because like, I want to do this. Like, this is what I want to do. So I signed up for a, a, um, a, my Afton. I don't know if you ever heard of that, but it's where you do concerts and uh, you have to sell 20 tickets. Well, barely anybody was buying my ticket even now for my, for my concert in the 21st. Um, I had this guy literally like last second buy the rest of the nine tickets, which was like about $90. What? like $12 worth and he like he just bought it and like I was just like so thankful and he's like oh no problem I was like that was weird and so the concert was amazing it was like therapeutic for me to just get out of the house you know sometimes it could be a little toxic here just different things going personal um but uh yeah it was just doing concerts is just very therapeutic for me you know the, just to be able to tell somebody my heart and speak that to people even now you know what I mean it's just no because when I saw like it's different when you see the artists going yeah. through their process. I think sometimes with social mm -hmm. people make it so glamorous and it's yeah, not. Yeah, yeah, it's you gotta nah. make hard choices. Yeah, if you're a Christian artist, like mm -hmm. God would challenge you. He would challenge greed. Mm -hmm. He would challenge your um, if how much you want to get wealth. I feel Absolutely. like yesterday. I mean, the other day, I was walking out of Whole Foods and I heard um. When Jesus mm. was talking to the rich young ruler, and he was like, mm -hmm. "Would you give up everything for me?" Exactly, that's it. And that's it. it was crazy because I haven't even read that piece of the Bible in a minute. Like I mm -hmm. stayed in Proverbs, but it was so crazy how the Holy Spirit speaks through the Scriptures, and he was like, mm -hmm. "Would you be willing to give it up for me?" Yeah, and I, I think I've really hold close to me as I've grown, and I'll sh that, that title of that single is "Love Loved Without Question." That's what it's called, and like it's just me you know, kind of speaking as God is speaking to me, seeing as I've always been there, you know what I'm saying? I've always eaten through all this. And so that's what that new single is called. But what kind of came to mind when you were talking about that was um, when, you know, how we get so caught up in, in, in the religious part of things. And um, it just reminds me of that verse, what good religion is, you know, the Bible really defines what good religion is. And that's loving the orphans and loving the widows that are in distress and keeping yourself, um, from being polluted from the world yeah and um i you know it's funny because there's a lot of uh i feel like institutionalized christianity that judges um certain people such as you know like of course you know we don't follow a buddhist religion we don't follow a, a some religion but good religion is defined as keeping oneself polluted from the world and um also about you know, loving the orphans. So if that Buddhist happens to be loving orphans and he happens to be keeping himself polluted from the world and he's showing the love that Jesus would love, I mean, that that's pretty Christian to me. You know, he might have his ideals somewhere and that needs to at some point get readjusted, but that's that's pretty like, that's pretty uh, intense love right there. You know? Well, and I mean, my thing, I've had atheists treat me better than Christians. I'm a absolutely, Christian. absolutely. Okay, because my I'll, best friends were the atheists, and we couldn't always agree, but we could respect right. each other. Though. We could respect <laughs> each other, and you could come together, you can go hang out anywhere, but it's like some Christians be like, oh, man, I ain't going there, bro. They're sinners. I was like, you a sinner too? <laughs> I feel like we all sinners, but some people just hide it better than others, but don't get me yeah. started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have all I, another I, I conversation about that. Yeah, I get in trouble real quick because the way me the too way my thoughts are set up. But we're not bashing For sure. Christians. I think that uh -uh. essentially everybody, the world and the church, wants to see us mature. Wants For to sure. see us truly walk in love, like you said. For sure. And you know, you can. 
the thing about love is love doesn't keep a record of wrongs. Nope. So when it comes to like judging people, yeah, Jesus mm-hmm. had his times where he was like, repent. Right. He did it in a loving way. Where he was did. Like, yeah, repent, but I'm going to cover you. A change of mind. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That mm-hmm. type of thing. Right. So, um, I, okay, so one of the songs that stood out to me was the one that you did like around the time with all of the um, riots and different things. Oh, like, okay, like, come together. Yeah. So just gotcha. tell us like some of your inspiration right. behind it. Right. So, um, yeah, man, that, that was interesting. So I am a, uh, just to put it out there, I am a conservative, conservative and, um, you know, I, I tend to lean towards the right as far as politically, but um, you know, looking at just people's hurt, it's not really about all about the, you know, what I feel or what I think, you know, it's all about, you know, other people's perspective and other people's things. And there's many things I could break down about it. But, um, you know, it's just really about understanding somebody's hurt um, that may be different from yours and uh, putting yourself in other people's shoes. And uh, keep in mind that uh, n- not... Um, you know, as far as, you know, a race goes and stuff, um, not everybody in the same race thinks the same. So it's like for when I was writing that song, Come Together, it was just like, you know what, screw everyone's ideals and let's just talk about coming together and uniting as one. And, uh, you know, because there's a lot of just crazy stuff going on in the world, many different perspectives. Not everyone's going to agree with you. People are going to disagree and just accepting that and just being like, hey, man, you know what, I may not agree with you but like i'm i'm i want to come together about this bro like because i'm sick of seeing the media do this and i'm sick of you know people going back and forth about you know you know skin color and it's just like i i want unity and like i don't see anything different with me than somebody else but i'm willing to put myself in your shoes for a second and really feel what you feel before i say anything because that's what's important is that i can that's what love is. That's what love is, is, is putting yourself in those people's shoes and considering what their interests are and what, you know, what their feelings are, regardless if you think it's wrong. That's still love to put yourself in those people's shoes. And so, like, that's kind of what inspired me to write that. Yeah, I agree. Because, like, the thing is, we have to pray. I think mm-hmm. if we spend less energy fighting each other in Twitter comments and Instagram mm-hmm. comments, trying yeah. to convince somebody and we spend more yeah. energy actually praying. Cause see this whole, I feel like we don't pray enough. I don't know. Some people pray all the time. <laughs> I know I don't pray enough. Like I know ah, the yeah. events that have taken place have really challenged me and my prayer yeah. life. Like Christina, yeah. maybe you should pray for the leadership because God yeah. can turn their hearts. You know for what sure. I'm saying? <laughs> so, for sure, for sure. But for sure. yeah, they, I just, it's disheartening to see people who call themselves believers acting like this in the world is looking at us. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They look at how we treat each other. They look at how we come at each other. Right. And, you know, they can see Absolutely. it. So I was actually happy to see that song. What's the name of the song? Yeah. Again? Uh, the song's called Come Together. Um, like I said, that wasn't really like professionally mixed or nothing. I just kind of put that out there, you know, just something to put on the channel, you know. Uh, but the song's like on Spotify and they can find it. Um, I, I think it is. I, I think that's just on YouTube, to be honest. Oh, YouTube. Okay. Um, I, I, it might be on, a, I'll, I have to check again. Um, okay. but yeah, okay. man, I had a lot of, I like that song. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. Thank you. Like, Appreciate that. I was happy to see that. Yeah. Um, and so COVID, how have you been if right. affected or impacted by COVID? Um, you know, to me, I, I look at it more as like a political virus, uh, you know, <laughs> but I, it's a, definitely a real thing. Um, my, my dad did get COVID and, um, you know, he didn't, he was, he was better in like a week or two, you know, and then I've seen stories, but as far as it has affected me, um, I didn't really like wearing the mask to be honest, because like, it was just for some, it like hurt my breathing more. It felt like after, but then I realized I was like, you know, it's probably just the way I was eating because that affected my breathing too. And so, you know, I just, I just kind of been like just chilling and like, you know, it sucks to see what's going on with, with, with everything, but you know, there's nothing I can do about it, you know? And so just kind of accepting what comes my way. And so when, how is it like doing shows right now? Right. So they, you know, they require a mask, you know, and they say six feet distance, social distance. And, um, I'm like, okay, you know, I'll put on the mask and, um, 
you know, I'm still going to do my thing, though. You know what I mean? I, <laughs> well, um, we, but, you know. We need the gospel to be spread. So Yeah, know. for sure. For sure. So, let me see. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. All right. I think that is it. Thank you for taking some time. No problem. To interview with us. And can you let everybody know mm -hmm. where we can find you? On yes. Something? So, uh, you can find my Instagram at Charlie Gist Music. Um, you can find my Twitter at uh, it's Charlie Gis. Um, also, you know, I'm on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, um, most of your, you know, major platforms, Facebook. Uh, I think it's, it's Charlie Gis as well. And uh, YouTube as Charlie Gis Music. I changed that from Charlie Gis to Charlie Gis Music. So, you know, people will not do music. But uh, also, I, I don't, don't just do music. I, I, I've been playing golf my whole life. So, you know, since I was 10, you know, played high school, middle school, college team. So that's been a big influence, you know, kind of learning the fruits of the spirit, things like that, you know, within the game. And so, yeah, that's it. All right. Well, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep you posted. Definitely going to bring you back. Um, and yeah, everybody make sure that you follow. I'll see if I can get some links so you guys can follow below and hear the songs. And you do have a song dropping on Monday, right? Drop it on Monday, and it's premiering at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, yeah, so it's dropping 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will be in the live chat. We usually get around 11 of, you know, sometimes 15 people, just depending on, you know, uh, what's going down. And, uh, yeah, and then shortly after that, you'll probably see a lyric video come out with my, with my next single, so. Okay. All mm -hmm. right. Well, thank you so much, and I'm going to...